we all like free stuff, but usually when it's free, there's some sort of catch or, you know, it's just a crappy product, but not this time. Before I jump into more details on this, I just wanna say I'm not looking at all the options here. There are other options than what I'm gonna be talking about, um, but the two biggest, at least that I know of, are GitHub Pages and Netlify. Netlify is what I personally use to host my own site, and I absolutely love it. Both Netlify and GitHub Pages are extremely easy to use. Um, it's gonna be easier for me to actually be showing you, but before we do that, uh, just an important thing that both of these are only for static sites. By static site, I mean HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript. You're not going to be having like a database on there or something hosting or WordPress or something like that. Um, but just because it's for static sites only doesn't mean you can't have a blog or something like that. I have sort of a bloggy article thing on here. You can even have a CMS. But I'm going to be talking more about that one, you know, a little bit later in the video when we're checking out all the stuff we can do with Netlify. So if you're already with GitHub, which many of you probably are, uh, GitHub Pages is obviously affiliated with GitHub and that makes it really easy to use. I've used it, I've set up sites on it, it's super easy. But that said, this video is gonna be about Netlify. It's what I'm more familiar with because it's what I'm hosting my own site on right now. Uh, it's also a bit more robust. There's a little bit more you can do with Netlify. And also, I just I wanted to make it clear this is not a paid promotion. I just really love the service that uh, they have. And more important than that though, I think it's just a lot of people may not realize how easy and simple it is to have a host these days and just how quickly you can actually get your site up there. So I wanted to show that and just show off you know, how, how you can do it and as an added bonus, how to do it for free. So with all that out of the way, let's jump on over to their website and check out how it all works. So here we are on their site. Now for Netlify, you need to have an account, but unlike many other sites, a Google account won't work here. So if I go to sign up, you'll see it's gonna be asking either for GitHub, a GitLab, or Bitbucket, or you can sign up just through email. I'd suggest using a Git site instead of email as one of the best features of Netlify is going to be set up with the integration of Git involved. But obviously you can just use the email option uh, if you want to. Uh, now, I personally use GitHub, so I'm going to go and check that out. Now, one nice thing with Netlify also over GitHub pages is you can use the other uh, Git sites in there. So I'm going to log in with my GitHub here. Uh, so first up, it's really easy. You can see I have my, my personal site is on here, and it's deploying from GitHub. And I also have this little manual deploy there, which was something I was just playing around with. Um, and so if we want to look at how we can do this the super easy, like insanely easy way, is you can literally just grab something off your desktop. So I have this folder off screen, but I'm just gonna grab it. You can see it saying move. So I'm just taking a folder literally off my desktop and I can drop this here. Now I've done this on other computers and with other people and it seems like some accounts for some reason it asks for a zip file and other ones it asks for a folder. I'm not sure what the difference was and I don't know if this was a while ago, so I don't know if they were doing some A-B testing or not. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna drop this in here. Uh, this is my brewery website. So you can see it's now uploading it. Uh, the site has not yet been deployed. And there we go, it's now published. It took about a minute for that to happen. I've had most sites I've put up here, it's been a lot uh, faster than that. And so I can see the last update was at 8.43 and I can just click on this link, quite literally, and I can visit my site. It's uploaded, it's online, and it's good to go. Um, so that's really cool. Now obviously it's using um, this n randomly generated URL, which isn't ideal, but it's nice to be able to get one up that easily and that quickly. Now you can see right here, I do have domain settings. I can very easily add in a custom domain. It's not hard to do. I can click here. You have to verify that you have it, but it's done in seconds. And once you have uh, your custom domain set up for free, you can set up an HTTPS, um, which is really cool. You know, it's, it's set up, it's good to go. You just set up your custom domain come down here and a little click away and then it'd be HTTPS on your custom domain, which is really, really awesome. Now, doing it this way isn't really using version control, but one thing that is kind of nice about this, I'm just gonna open up this file here and let's go into my images and let's just rename, or I'll, I'll add a new one in here. So I've added in uh, beer five. So I'm gonna go over to deploys now and you can see need to update your site, drag a new folder in. So I can just drag my folder back into here and this one is published. Um, actually, that's already done. So it's already been updated. Everything 
the the new version is there again you just go to your little deploys page drag your folder up here and you're good to go which is really awesome the nice thing with this is you can sort of roll back through your different versions of your site so even in, though i'm not using uh, version control here like i would be with git it sort of does it for me it's easy to roll back for old versions if you have to the hard way to set things up is to link to a git repo when I say hard, it's not hard. It's just slightly more work than clicking and dragging a folder into our browser window here. So let's go back to my overview here. Um, actually, let's go back to my site. And so here on my sites, we can see that now I have this, uh, you know, my, my other one here, and it's set to manual deploys. But what if I wanted this not to be on manual deploys? So um, over on GitHub, I have this whole thing set up here. My brewery website was set up on GitHub to begin with. So if I want, I can set up a new site from Git. Even though I'm logged in through GitHub, I can still choose to get a continuous deployment here from one of the other providers. In this case, I am still with GitHub, so I'm gonna click on there. I'm already logged in, so I don't actually have to make a change. And I'm gonna come, uh, there are a lot of forks there, of one of the ones that I am uh, following, but I'm gonna look for a brewery. And I can see my two repos, so I'm gonna go on this one. I can choose what branch I want to deploy from, so if you're not deploying from your master for some reason. And you can do some basic build settings here and go into some more advanced stuff, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. We're going to see that in a second. And I'm going to hit deploy. So you can see now it is building my site. And it is published. So I can click on here and I can see that site live. So already I think that's really, really awesome. This site is up, it's live, and it's working. Um, but what I can actually do now, because this is set up with GitHub, if I come over here and let's just go, uh, let me see the text here, local, uh, for example, let's make a change where we'll be able to see the beer. So I can come onto here, I wanna go to my index. I'm just gonna edit this page um, this way, edit this file, and let's find it. Uh, the beer here is an edit just to show you you know we can make some changes so I'm going to commit that change update that's fine I'm going to commit that change now this isn't necessarily the way we should be working <laughs> um, but the change has been committed so if I come back over to here um, I'm going to refresh this and we should see it might already be um, let's go over to my deploys um, it's already updated it. If you're on a longer one that has some building stuff, you might see that it's it's doing it. But here you can see it says update index.html. It took three seconds to do it. And if we come back to my site and I refresh, we can see that on this live site, it has been updated. So the big advantage here is anytime you update your master branch of your repo, the site is automatically updated. You don't have to come back to Netlify or do anything. It's just updated on its own. You don't even have to come back in, log in, or anything like that. And another cool thing is once you have your site up and running, you can also have it do some post-processing for you, which is a big win in my books. So um, on my deploy settings here, I'm going to come on to post-processing. And you can see that we can do some snippet injection. So say you have a Google Analytics that you want to add in, you can just type the name in there, paste in the code, and you want to do it before the closing body or inside the head. So that's really nice that you can, you know, say you have a site that you already have up and running and you need to add a snippet to it. You can use this to automatically inject the snippets on all your pages. So that's a really, really nice thing right there. There's also asset optimization, which I'm going to go into my edit settings. Um, right now it's disabled, but I can enable it. So I can have it pretty, um, I can have it do pretty URLs, which means slash about.html would just become slash about, uh, which is kind of cool. Now it does that by creating extra folders and then putting an index in the folder. Um, you can have it, if you have a bunch of CSS files, it will concatenate those files for you, which is really, really cool. It puts it down into one uh, file. You can also have it minify your CSS. So if you're not doing this on your own end, you can have it done automatically. And then the exact same thing for your JavaScript. You can have it concatenate your JavaScript into a single file and minify your JS at the same time. And maybe the coolest thing of all is compressing images. They'll uh, automatically run it through lossless image compression. You just have to make sure these are set up. Now, I had a problem on my own personal site with it bundling the CSS just because of how I'd set things up. It was causing a bit of an issue, so I did disable the bundle CSS. 
Um, but otherwise, uh, I'm using a lot of these and it's just nice not to have to, uh, you know, if you're an NPM wizard and you're all doing this already, it's all good. But if you're not doing that stuff on your own end, it's nice that this can automatically happen every time you just push a change onto GitHub. So I think that's really, really cool. There's other things that it can do as well as far as like split testing. So AB testing, forms, identity functions. These are all included for free. So if you want to form on your website, you can have it, you can learn from their docs. I'm not going to go deep into that right now. Um, for there is pricing that gets involved on the forms and the split testing and stuff like that. At one point it's free still, but if you're hitting out some bigger numbers, you might get start getting charged for those. So if you're hitting bigger numbers, um, you know, that's where things can come in. Because while it is free, there is a pricing tier. So if we click here and look at the pricing of it, um, you get one user. So if you need more than one person uh, logging in, that could be an issue. But otherwise, um, you, can, you can't have password protected sites, which you get when you start paying. Um, but for the most part, you're getting a really, really awesome uh, thing. Let's go look here. We have the full table. Um, so, you know, you might see a few things in here, but one thing you'll notice is it's not charging you for like the, the it's not asking you to look for things like how many people are visiting your site. Um, some of those things do come on. So if I see the forms here for free, you're getting a hundred submissions per month. So after that, if you're getting more than that, you'll have to start paying for it. Um, same thing, you can have people uh, logging into your site for free. You can have a thousand active users. And then after that, you will have to start paying which if you have more than a thousand active users of people logging in, you can definitely afford it. Um, and then some functions, uh, which are kind of cool, but again, it get, this is getting a bit more advanced, but some really cool stuff you can do with that. Um, now one thing, and the functions, this all sort of plays in with why would it be free and then turn into paid? And it's because Netlify, just like GitHub sites, is only for static websites, meaning HTML and CSS, and some JavaScript, obviously. But you can't host something like WordPress on these sites. I run my site, which has articles, though. Um, so I do have like a blog on there. I'm doing this with Jekyll, which is a static site generator, and it works great. Basically, when I add a new post and I push the change to my master branch, Netlify recompiles the entire site. And it literally takes like maybe a minute to do. Um, but now if you're building out a site for a client, they probably don't want to be dealing with Jekyll and pushing changes to a server. They just want to hit save. So Netlify does actually come with a CMS. So here's their CMS, um, and I just said that Netlify comes with the CSS. It doesn't come with the CSS. They have a way of, they do have a CMS that you can integrate into your site, and it works with static site generators. So this is things like Jekyll, like Hugo, and there, there's a whole bunch of other ones as well. So it is an option um, to build out uh, with a CMS. Now, I've never personally used it, but it's definitely an option. And it is something that I want to be looking at in the near future because it might make my life a little bit easier for putting up my posts. Uh, for clients, this is a really big it depends. It depends on what the client's needs are. And hopefully you have that figured out before one line of code is written. At the moment, I only use it for my personal site, but it is a pretty powerful host and I wouldn't discount using it for clients in the future. It really depends on what they need, but if a simple CMS like this could work on it, I don't see why not. So just to recap what we looked at, we can have Netlify here. It's a super awesome um, service. I'd strongly recommend it for your personal site. Uh, as it says here, you connect your repository, you can add in some build settings, which are really simple to set up. I have some basic build settings on my personal one. I just have like a Jekyll build and it goes and that's it. It deploys my website every time I just push to GitHub and make a change. Um, so really nice. You can get a free HTTPS. You can link your domain to it. So the only thing you'd be buying is your domain. Um, and they just have some really cool, uh, things you can add on to there and sort of push the limits a little bit more with your forms and other stuff as well. Their documentation is really good. So this, it's definitely a service I would recommend if you're just look, you know, if you're looking for a personal site or something like that, 100%, unless of course you need something like WordPress or something a little bit fancier like that. Now this is just a quick overview of the things you can do with Netlify. There's a lot more to it um, with their integrations, their forms, and uh, the A-B split testing and all of that stuff. So if you're interested in all of this, I really encourage you to go and check it out. Um, if you're not using that or if you're paying for hosting right now, if you just have a simple static site, this is an awesome uh, thing that you could be using. If you're a student and you just don't have a lot of money and you don't want to pay for hosting, 
this is the, probably a really good solution for you. Uh, so I encourage you either check out GitHub Pages, which is also an awesome service, um, or of course Netlify, which for me I think is, you know, it works fantastically for what I'm using them for. I hope you like this video. I hope that you can take advantage of this and this, this can help you out with uh, your hosting needs. And uh, if you have any questions or any comments about it, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll see if I can help you out. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.